Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, welcome to the July board meeting of the Shrewsbury Housing Authority. Thank you. Um, we'd like to jump right in. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is review the June minutes. I'll take a motion if anyone's read them. Uh, motion to accept the June meeting minutes. Have second. a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Moving on to the treasurer's report. Kelly, I'm looking at the balances as of June 30th. Yes. Everything looks healthy. Anything to share with us? Does anyone have any questions for Kelly regarding the balances or the unaudited statement, which is also part of the uh, treasurer's report? No questions, comments, or concerns. I will take a uh, vote to accept the treasurer's report. Motion to accept the treasurer's report. Motion to accept the treasurer's report. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Uh, the billables, the payables. Page seven uh, for all those on the PDF. Does anyone have any questions? Go ahead, Kat. I don't have necessarily a question, but more of a, a comment on uh, like the Better Electric. When I saw that at 4203 for refrigerator, I, yeah. I almost had a stroke. I'm um, sure. I realized <laughs> it's four stoves and three yeah, yeah. refrigerators. It's probably 20 refrigerators. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. That sub zeros, so. aren't they lucky? Um, um, <laughs> but I guess my only comment is should we change the classification from refrigerator to appliances just so, so when Shirley does out the bills? Mm -hmm. When it, this is printed, it only lists one. Okay. But once you see the bill, it will list a whole list. And if you look at Gary's report, it's more than just one refrigerator. Right, as right. This is yes, that's it. what I saw. Yeah, I guess my only comment was that the document description, if that should be changed. But I guess you, the, you can't the way the system's set up. So, better electric. Eighteen five four five. So refrigerator. So it says six eighty nine. So that's one of our estate mm -hmm. family. So if we got a refrigerator here from Better Electric, it has to be labeled as forty one dash one bedroom okay. refrigerator. So it all has to be separate. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. So does that answer your question? Following Kathy? up on that question. So clarification, what uh, 689 refrigerator, 175 Lake, what does that mean? So it's it, four stoves and three refrigerators. That's 175 Lake. <coughs> yes, I guess. Is 175 Lake a proxy for multiple lake units? So we're going to see them on the on the bills right, right, right. Right. when we sign. So Francis Gardens had two refrigerators. The towers, one stove. Lake Street had, it's a double refrigerator, mm -hmm. so that bill came in um, at $1,269. Is that all included in this? So then I guess I echo I Kathy's guess. sentiment in that, is no, it all is being it charged the yes. 689 So then the 175 Lake shouldn't really be there. So as I was saying, when she prints it, so this is vendor accounting register. So she has all this listed on her on the check but it's only going to take the first oh so are you saying it might say 689 one refrigerator, 411 one stove and so yes, forth and so on it's listed so, out in the bottom half okay and we're just seeing there. line one okay yes. right, so your comment is well taken kathy but i think it's just a reporting issue yes all that's right. what it sounds like okay and just Thank as you. an fyi um we have a great arrangement with Better Electric. We've always had it predates me. They hold inventory for us. They bill us ship, and if we need a half a dozen, they'll take a half a dozen. We'll let them sit here in the villa. So they've, um, at least in my op opinion, Kelly or Richard, feel free to correct. They've always been a good partner in terms of inventorying and holding and pricing and stuff like that. Yes. Just FYI. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, other questions on the uh, the payables. Go ahead. Yep. 18576 includes town trash bags. Why would we have to buy town trash bags? So we have a family unit. Um, 
Oh, okay. So they don't have, they're not part of the trash that we discussed last yes. week. Yes. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Dumpsters are for the three big complexes. Okay. All the family units are at, as if any other residents would. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But that's a good question. We supply trash bags for the family units? So, no. I did this under a reasonable accommodation one time. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. Thank right. you. Again, the question spawned a good follow up. Um, <laughs> uh, can I follow that up? By all means. How does that qualify for, as a reasonable accommodation? What is that? So, reasonable accommodation, the town wasn't picking up the trash. Mm -hmm. She forwarded a letter. The um, council forwarded me and asked as a one time that you purchase to help pick up the trash as in the reasonable accommodation she wanted to use on the dumpsters. Okay. Thank you. Gail? I'm all set. Thank you. Sir? No. Nope. Richard, others? Because I have one or two, if there aren't others. Okay. Thank you. You're all I have. Uh, Mark Fournier? Sorry. Compliance inspections? Compliance for what? That is Section 8 inspections. Got it. It's our inspections. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's one I ask every single time I see it, but <laughs> I just want to keep us all on the same page that I can't seem to get on. Um, <laughs> MQH Incorporated, MHQ Incorporated. That's where we get our trucks fixed and inspected. Okay, all right. Um, this all looks good to me. Anyone else have any other questions? No. All right, I'll take a motion to approve. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Kelly, please approve the uh, 63-847-80. And then the uh, following page is just a breakdown. That's informational only for this body. If anyone has any questions, if not, we'll keep moving. Okay. Uh, we're at the HAP check register. I will need a motion. Motion to approve HAP check register. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moved. Section 8. Motion to approve the, uh, the uh, Section 8 and the amount of 752. Oh, you're oh, a sub. Sorry. 15120. 15120. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Payroll? Motion to accept payroll. As printed? As uh, printed. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Kelly? Uh, that brings us through all of um, <laughs> Treasure and Financial and uh, on to Gerda Hiley. Uh -huh. oh. yeah. So this letter is from Guy to Hurley. Um, they come to do our federal audits. They will be coming Go ahead. August 8th. Um, in the meantime, yeah, they ask if you guys have any um, questions or concerns, and if you do, you just fill out the enclosed. Um, I provide an envelope, so if you want to mail. It's for us to complain about you. <laughs> that's what you, I <laughs> asked you that prior to the meeting, and that's that. basically what she said. That's have what you she said. <laughs> um, and they normally get our audit done. This is where the retirement, we had an issue with last year. Um, they look at all the financials, federal, state, section eight. So essentially we'll get dinged again for the retirement? We could. It yeah. hasn't changed. No. No, no. No, we'll get dinged again for it because they our, asked us to have the town change their plan. Yeah, they asked us to have the town change their fiscal yeah, exactly. year. Exactly. It's not going to work. <laughs> it's the greatest. <laughs> he sat here with a straight face and asked us. Um, are any questions regarding this? Uh, we're all left to sign it and complete it ourselves, or sign it and complete it, and Kelly will be glad to mail it for if you. If you want it. Uh, Is it mandatory? Yeah. Okay. It's mandatory. Yes, yes, we, we have to. It, we have to it. sign it and complete it. What you say and what you write about Kelly is entirely up to you. 
All right, any questions with that? If so, we can go offline with Kelly directly. Kelly, uh, the next information also under correspondence is the Office of the Inspector General. Do you want to elaborate on that for us, please? So Joyce Taylor from the state has sent an email regarding um, offering classes for public board and boards and commissioners. Um, the next class is being held at, I believe, Clark. Um, there was a previous email, I want to say that it was last month or the one month before, <coughs> asking for the same thing. Right. Um, <coughs> it must be something coming down the line that they're pushing. Yeah. For so notifications. I get these emails directly, directly from um, the, the state. Does everyone else yes. to my okay. left and right yes. get them as well? Do you I, get them, Kath? No. So I was going to say, I'm not surprised given the newest, but make sure <laughs> that. Kelly gives you a correct email address to the person because when I get them, I'm always looking through to say, oh, is this something where I'm not working? Is it something I have to, I might be interested in, and it's easier to just flip through right on my own PC. So, so you're not getting no emails? I'm not, but um, a special email was set up when they set this up, and I may not be checking them. So um, let, I'll let you know. I'll call you. Okay. I'll go in. I don't know if I added that to my phone or if it's just on my laptop. I think it's the one that you gave. Yeah, yeah, okay. So and I'll you check. can do an auto forward to anywhere else. I, too, you know, actually, you know what? I do have it on here. The last one I received was right before our last meeting, so I'm not getting it. Not getting it. Yeah. Okay. And it's the, um, it's the S, what is my email? S H A McSweeney. Yep. Yeah. I will recheck. I will go into GHCD. Okay. And I will also go into the PIC system to make sure. Because okay. it's not bad. It serves as a reminder for registration and our compliance and our training and all that other stuff. So, I mean, rather than have you, I, I like that we talk about it as a group, but it's also good for us to get them individually. So, okay. so if anybody does want to go to this training, um, it is next week, July 25th from 9 to 12 at o'clock. I can go. Would you? I can sign you up. Okay. 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 Other questions regarding that? Are we good? We're good. Okay. Good. Uh, general correspondence, including um, the, the narrow and the MCPO and things like that. I have not been getting those. Okay. Oh, really? I'm not sure why. Have not been. Normally, they've been overloading me and doubling up on months. It's been quiet for a couple of months. Um, check it out. Maybe you want to poke around and check it out? Yeah. Vacancy. Francis Gardens. Um, we have two moving. Um, one's going to be a transfer, so it's going from a a family that has gone from a family of three is now one person. She is moving into a six six seven. Um, Wait, she is, is she within our system now? Yes. Is she, she one, is of, a family, in, in in a one family. of the family units? Okay. So one of our family units is going to become vacant. Okay. That's, um, That's great. We, I can't remember the last time. Yeah, I, I just whispered to Ms. McSweeney that that doesn't happen very often. That's, mm -hmm. that's great. Um, and then the other apartment is most likely a move down okay. um, under reasonable accommodation. Someone okay. who's on the second is asking for a first floor. Have you been inside the family unit yet? What kind of work is that going to need? Um, it'll need some work. It's going to need some work. Okay. Where is it located? I can't really say that. Okay. All right. Uh, but it is one of our family okay. units. Okay. That's fine. All right. Typically, though, they, they require um, usually when when they do right. I mean, that's why I asked. Time, I recall a few it's years been a long back. Time and, yeah. And our residents don't don't really maintain to the level. Standard. Well, they, they don't do any upgrades, let's right. put it that way. So mm -hmm. it, it, they all need right, right. Well, I recall the last time we had a family unit behind me. I remember that they needed a lot. Yeah, this one too does. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, so we probably won't see that for at least 30 or 60 days, more uh, likely. We, we could go longer. It depends okay. how many other vacancies we have Get in the meantime. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. Questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, federal? Federal, we are leased up. Um, the last resident actually signed their lease today. Good, great. Good. 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 
Um, section eight. You're down two. We're down two. Kelly, what God, is going on? going on? This is here. epic. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> devastated. Okay. I, this I is always 100%. <laughs> I'll bet you are. Um, the Section 8 has always been my baby. I know. Um, I've done it before I was here. Um, always 100%. As I said last month, we have Give me that of, early report back. I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> last month, um, I told you guys we have a lot of tenants who are total tenant payment over. So they have been paying their full amount of rent for the last six months. So I knew it was coming. Um, I'm happy for them. We sent out, I want to say, Tina has 20 applications. Three have responded. I'm amazed. That's shocking. Um, I'm amazed for, for all the calls that I seem to get. Yeah. You and me both. That you would only have that many responses. Yeah, and actually one person was from here and the other one is a family, another family unit. Um, I'm happy if they decide to take the Section 8 and leave. Sure. Um, but we're sending to go another 20 more. We're going back to almost 2015 with these applications. Granted, on these lists, that see people are on these lists for so long that they, they move on. They matriculate, so. Yeah. Yeah. so. So, hopefully, next month I'll be back to 173. Okay. I'm going to note the date and time. This is a big day in the Shoes for Housing Authority. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I just lost it. Hold on. Okay. Uh, the bulletin. Um, no, no interesting feedback there, unless anyone else has any. No. Okay. Social services report. I guess it, it talks about uh, grills, which we're going to be talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's under new business, yeah. so I skipped over it. Okay. Um, uh, show us 30 people. Okay, good. That seems to be the new norm. Anywhere I've noticed, anywhere from 30 to 35 is typically the new norm. So, uh, HUD inspections. Yes, REAC is going to be here next Monday. Um, they came three years ago, two years ago, when I first took over, um, they look at everything. So they come in and they pull from the list. So how do we... Um, so this is new business, right? The REACT, just to be clear, we're, we're moved on to new business, REACT being the first. Go ahead. How do we give notice to the residents as to these randomly selected apartments? So on July 10th, I printed out 99 of these and I delivered each notice either to their door or I slid it under. Um, and if they had any questions, they could come down, they could talk to me. If there was any okay. issues in their apartments um, well, regarding what, work orders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So out of the 99 um, apartments, I want to say they pick five, random. Okay. They go in and look from everything from the closet door to the windowsill to the um, <laughs> door flapper. Okay. And so do you, those people that responded, are those the one that React will go to or will they still be random? It's random. Okay. I notified every single tenant okay. in this building. All right. Um, they just pick any. Okay. But the people that responded to the notification, which would have been normal kind of standard maintenance issues, you just follow those into the normal process. Or oh, absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. Questions? Okay. So the next thing on the new business is this PHN 2018. It's a 32 on our dock. So talk to us that, about this. What does that really mean? Yeah, to talk to us about this. Does this mean that uh, we lose our We're local losing local conference? control. Yeah. I don't really think we would lose our local control preference of living or working in the town of Shrewsbury because we didn't lose that preference with the centralized Section 8. I think it's just going to be a unified one application just like Section 8 where you fill out one page and you're on maybe 70 housing authorities. 
So if Shrewsbury Housing Authority needed five people, we would click live in Shrewsbury or Kirkland's working in the town of Shrewsbury. And those five people would pop to the top just like Section 8. I am going to Boston next week. Um, all executive directors need training on this program. Um, it's not going to happen next month or I see in the next six months. But it's. Who's gonna, who are you going to take with you for the training? I'm going myself. You, I will come back. You know you and, can bring someone, right? Yes. Okay. I will come back um, and actually train Tina, who does, who enters all the applications. Would it make sense to bring her? Is she not interested in that? Or you, does that make sense or to let you manage that process? Or? I don't believe she's in that day. Okay. Um, just because of uh, transfer of information and knowledge, it might just be better for her to be there, but I'll let you manage that personal knowledge. Every time I go to a training, I always make full copies, and I give it to Tina, to Shirley, to Jennifer. Okay. Um, they get to a different okay. part of the job in the office. Um, okay, good. That's up to you. Um, okay. Uh, to spin off on that, only because it came up in our meeting and uh, before we jump to the next piece of new business, which is discussion on gas grill, I have a quick update for this board. Um, you may recall that at the last board when we ran checks, one of them was the payment in lieu of taxes, the pilot check for the town. Um, as discussed by this board, myself and our treasurer uh, went and presented that check to the town. It was maybe, we meet on a Tuesday, it was either the week after that or two weeks after yeah. that, uh, very short order after the meeting. Um, what I did in conjunction with some of the people here is just develop a list of bullets of what we've been doing for the last few years, the change of personnel, the new composition, the new laws, the, some of the newer policies like the smoking, a half a dozen bullet points, and they kind of gave us the floor. Um, I gave some updates to that. Gail talked about the check. They asked us a few questions. And um, I will pass along the feedback from the selectmen that they were essentially thrilled and pleased and very, very ecstatic about how well they perceived the Shrewsbury Housing Authority to be run and um, how pleased they are with the relationship we have with that board and how pleased they are with um, the way we've been able to take care of local preference and military and all of that. So all in all, it was a lot of very, very strong feedback that I felt obligated to pass into this board. Gail was with me if you want to add to that. No, it's just what I, I mentioned to the board that one of the things, being a relatively new person, is um, I was always amazed at the fiscal responsibility of the, of the commissioners on this board, and I think that's that's why we're in such good shape because it's outstanding. It has been. Kathy and I, relatively newcomers to this, but um, that that to me has been one of the real positive uh, parts of this is the fact that it's a very fiscally responsible board. And they were acutely aware that their you know our hand isn't out in any way, shape, or form. They are acutely aware that we're entirely self-sustaining, and in fact, the opposite that we give to the town in a variety of ways, some of which we highlighted, the boss, the pilot, and things like that. So I just wanted to pass that feedback along. It was um, something that we don't need to do every year, but every two or three years, it probably makes sense to do. And it, um, the selectmen, I've done it twice now. Yeah. And, and they were very happy to take the check. They were, they were, it was very well received. <laughs> they uh, um, well, when I made a joke to um, Newtown manager, Mr. Mizagar, and I said, uh, you know, we talked for all of five or 10 minutes with some updates, and then Gail had them to check. And as she was doing that, I said, just so you know, Kevin, this was always Dan Morgato's favorite part of this update, and everyone kind of got a chuckle out of that. So uh, that's it. That's my update. It wasn't quite on the agenda. Uh, Kelly, talk about gas grills. It's the last item on new business. So at each of our developments, um, we have charcoal grills. And the previous executive director purchased, the housing authority purchased charcoal. Um, a tenant from Francis Gardens called me two weeks ago and was he was given or donated um, a gas grill and I looked in the regulations couldn't find anything um, so I contacted the EHCD Karen Ellis the state attorney and she sent me this letter um, from Sutton Housing Authority so then I was in a group with all these executive directors and I asked what is their intake and how are their boards perceived of having gas grills. 
So only Clinton and Webster Housing Authority um, sent me their policies. Where is this um, resident? That, uh, Francis. 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 Okay. Well, I don't think I would be in favor of, of allowing gas grills. I'm not sure of the safety of the liability if. Well, the fire code them. doesn't. Fire code doesn't allow them on the porches anyway. Right. So on a multifamily. But where would they be then? Right. Where would they put them? Well, they'd have right. to be 15 feet or right. 20 feet off of the exactly. corner of the parking right. lot. So the, the problem is is always enforceability. So if you start letting one person have, have one on a ground floor outside of their unit, then the people that are on the second floor are going to say, well, geez, I'm going to put one up on my porch and um, better to ask forgiveness than permission. Right. So um, I'm strongly in favor of having a policy prohibiting grills. I agree. Gas all grills. So, gas, grills. gas grills. So, Kelly, do we? I know the previous executive. Well, when you say all grills, I mean charcoal grills are even, they're just they're even, even more, more dangerous. dangerous. Yeah. Um. So, gas grills. I think I think the reason why they're, they're addressing gas grills is probably because everybody gets gas grills these days. Mm -hmm. but, but so, I do recall the previous executive director and the charcoal grill and allowing these charcoal grills. And so, what is? DCHD's position, because this letter that you sent us clearly comes from a regional housing authority. Um, so does DCHD have a position? So DHCD is just basically saying they recommend that your housing authority adopt a policy against allowing tenants to have gas grills at gas. state, yeah, state okay. aid at housing units. Um, well, I think we should be consistent just for our own sanity. Well, why why well, would they only single out? I, I, I'm, I'm well, really that's what I remember. No, the reason I'm asking is, is I remember Dennis saying, in the back of my mind, that rang true. The dentist said, "We're not. We shouldn't have gas, but we'll allow charcoal." That's I'm trying to verify that. They have Webster Housing does not allow charcoal, gas grills, or fire. Right, right. But that's I, so. That's a regional. So, I was right. asking about what DHCD says. DHCD is in the position where. They're putting everything on the housing authority and right. the housing authority board. They're basically saying, we're here to oversee certain stuff, but your board is basically there to set policy. Okay, fair um, enough. But they're recommending against, if I'm hearing you, we set the policy, their recommendation would be against gas. Yes. We're certainly free to do whatever we want to and from gas, to and from charcoal, anything like that. Absolutely, yeah. but then I think it gets But we, but to we the do point. have gas grills for people at our community rooms, right? They're all charcoal. Those are all charcoal. Okay, so we have charcoal grills outside the community rooms, right? And this um, person who was having the gas grill donated to them, wanted to use it as the community room. Um, it would be under his control and everything. So if, if I may, I think there's some room for this um, board to create a policy, which is obviously our charter, about what type of grills we can use and in what way. I don't want to jump to a conclusion, gas, not gas, charcoal, not charcoal. But even the Webster one basically says in a certain area there's a lot of a grill, which is what we are kind of de facto doing right now, certainly at Francis and over here as well. Dennis always said he had an area over here so what I'd like to do, to Richard's point, rather than let the uh, tenants think, oh, I'm just going to do it, and if someone yells at me, I'd like to come down with a policy that we create that says, and again, I don't want to rush the judgment, in each building, in each area. Now, family units are going to get significantly harder to enforce, to your point. But I think if we start with the, the big three units, or maybe go enterprise-wide, um, I'm certainly more anxious about gas than I am about charcoal, but I do want the tenants to be able to grill in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's gas or charcoal, we can figure it out, and where we do that and what's safe in area with concrete or fire pit or whatever, I think we can all figure out. That's my two cents. I'll let other people respond. Go ahead. Should we consult with the fire chief and see what his thought is on this? He'll say get rid of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, we could. Um, Unless we don't want his answer, then we should. <laughs> <laughs> like a lawyer asking yeah, the question. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did, con well, Gary did consult with the buyer regarding mulch. Okay. And there is um, a setback. We have a prohibition against even having mulch too close to the buildings. Mm -hmm. 
because of people flipping cigarettes and starting fires. Mm -hmm. I myself am in favor of a, of, a, of a policy very similar to what Webster did um, because it's a blanket policy. It covers all units. And if we don't have a policy that covers trampolines, swing sets, swimming pools, and things of that nature, then we ought to. Um, trampolines and at family units would be very, very dangerous. So I don't disagree at all, Mr. Rico. The only thing I would note is that they do talk about what I was alluding to, an exception where they have a certain area where they provide the grills and the tenants clean them up. That's kind of where I was headed. And we would, I think we know where that area is. Certainly in my mind, I know where that area is at both Francis and this unit. I if, think that I think that um, it's a good idea. For but I don't know Elizabeth where that, that unit is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, we're, yeah. we're agreed, I think, is yeah, what I'm so saying. So I mean, that's, that's part of this policy. Yeah, yeah. And I think that um, it addresses that. So right. I mean, and so I think right. at Francis, we know where that area is. And I think here, we know that area is. I don't know where that area is at Elizabeth. I do know when we all did a tour at Elizabeth a year or so ago, we saw a couple of grills out by out the by shed. The but we also asked the question, is that too close to the shed? Is that too close to the woods? So but I think what we said at that time was move it, move it to the some, left, away, yeah, from the, okay. away from the garage. Right. And I think we, I think we did say that. Yeah. At that yeah. Time. Okay. So I noticed that they have one in-ground charcoal grill at, at their placement. Yeah, that would need to be fabricated. Would, I mean, yeah, we'd have to fabricate that. And I don't think that's something I'm interested yeah. in. So no, I'm just saying that, that, that I like the blanket say. type of policy that they, that they I don't have disagree. because lacking another one, um, I think, you know, we're we're living in a, lit, a litigious society. Right. So. Right. I don't disagree. So would it be the purview of this board to ask Kelly to uh, use some of these models, seek some DHCD guidance, and come back to us maybe in a month at the next meeting with a proposed draft policy? I'd like to see that. Uh, yes. I, I don't want to yes. speak for everyone, but I want to get everyone's consensus. Yes. yes. Kath, yeah? I, I'm still struggling with why gas is more dangerous than charcoal, though. I don't think it is. So I think charcoal, you can get burned easier. Right, yeah, and that ends up in the mulch, and then we have a fire. Which is why I think we should be, we should include, in, we should include both gas and, and charcoal. I, I really think, do. I don't think that uh, charcoal is any more dangerous thing than gas. I think gas is more dangerous because you have the possibility of leakage, you have the possibility of explosions, um, and that sort of thing when people don't know how to handle it. That's my problem. Okay. But I think that Kathy's right. I think that they're, they're both inherently dangerous. Of course. If, if not used correctly. And right. and we're not here and our staff is not here all the time to make sure that someone is using these things correctly. The Webster policy prohibits both charcoal and right. gas. Right. So if it's modeled after that or something similar to that. And if we provide Grills at a certain location at each one of our facilities. Then, I'm sorry, that's sh that should. I think be that's done. incumbent on us. That's what yeah. I was saying. I think right. we certainly should do that and shore up those areas if they're not already shored up with blocks or concrete or what maybe. I know the Francis Garden because I've been on that patio. Is set back away. It's on concrete. It's probably as safe as one could be over here. I'm not sure because I haven't physically walked it. But I think if in our policy, certainly at these two, we say there will be a designated area and it will be maintained by the housing authority, though you are still responsible for the care and maintenance of your own usage, uh, I'm okay with something like and that. And even if we had to spend a little bit of our antenna money to, to make to sure shore that there something is up a over here. pad. Yeah, a, a pad, maybe a little bit of a brick backing or something. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm all set Absolutely. with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I like the Webster policy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, following up on your uh, suggestion, Paul, I, I would ask uh, that our executive director right. um, listen to our preferences and uh, come back to us with a proposed policy if she can by next meeting. Kelly, is what we're asking you to do clear to you? Are you yes. good? If you have any questions, certainly and, feel and free And of to course, this also, because this is televised and because we have a residence here, this also gives residents an opportunity to uh, give Kelly their two cents. So I would, in, I would certainly invite uh, our residents at the, our various facilities to um, let Kelly know if there is any specific issue relative to this policy that they think should be addressed. Okay? Completely agree. Any other questions on that? I don't think we need to vote, Kelly, because that's a to-do in your corner. So if you've got that, we're good. All right. 
Any other questions? Yes, how come we don't have an old business on this agenda? <laughs> uh, Talk to the uh, young lady who like developed the agenda. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> because we do have some old business. Um, Any old business? Yeah. Um, <laughs> one is the trash collection. I'd like to hear what we heard about, yes. what we've learned about the trash collection. I didn't give her any, any, yeah. any notice I'm <laughs> jumping her. <laughs> so I called. Yeah. You. Yep. We're going to set up a date and a time. Yep. I'm waiting for you to call. Oh, so that, that's on me? <laughs> Whoops. So you're I jumping who? I thought we were going to um, get another uh, price and. Uh, and we were going to look at the Republic contract. Did we get the Republic contract? You wanted I wanted to, see to that talk contract. to James. Yes. So James basically said, um, break the contract. That's what I wanted to bring back to the board, yes. So... But I also wanted to see the contract, and I think I'm waiting to see that. You did. Okay. So falls on both of us. Okay. okay. Fair enough. So it'll be old, old business at the next meeting? Well, yes. I, yeah, I want to I want to resolve this because okay. um, right. because we're paying way too much for our trash. That we've learned. We agreed on yes. that. Correct. That we've learned. Um, one thing I did suggest to Kelly, and I don't know if you've had a chance to do it, uh, is to go back to our present vendor mm -hmm. and say to, say to them, listen, you're way out of line. If you want us to finish the contract, you got to come down to this level that these other folks are, are uh, charging. Okay, um, that way we won't have to break a contract, face a lawsuit, um, whatever that. Yeah, renegotiate entails. the existing contract. Renegotiate the existing contract if they want to keep it because it's just so out of line. Mm -hmm. Double. So, um, I'm assuming you haven't had a chance to do that yet. We've called Gary and myself. Um, they're not returning phone calls. All the other vendors who. Um, is sending in like proposals or whatever. Um, they're all responding. Republic's not responding. I know they're having some issues in a different town. Um, union strikes and stuff like that. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it. Um, we used to have a contact person who no longer works there anymore. Okay, so we may find ourselves breaking the contract anyway. But, um that will certainly spur a discussion. So. Okay. okay. Other old business? Yeah, I have something. Um, I was curious to know how the weekend security is going. So security is going absolutely great. Um, we added more hours. Um, they break it up. So they could be here tonight um, from, say, 8 to 10 or 11 to 1. Um, I think the tenants are happy with security. Um, I get an update every morning, basically, um, if there was an issue. Um, I think it's going very well. Glad to hear it. Other questions, old I, business or otherwise? I haven't heard any of any complaints about the security at all, so that's, that's, good, that's news good news. Enough. Yes, yeah. that's good news. Yeah. Good. Uh, I don't have any other old business. Did, did we vote in that rent, rent collection policy last month? We did, okay. All right, all right so you're all set, Ms. Ruffin? Yep. Ms. Fitzmini, any other questions? I'm good. Yeah? I'm all set, thank you. All set, okay. All right, at this time, if I'll open it up to the audience. If anyone in our audience has any questions, we'll be glad to take them. Go ahead, please. A couple months ago, Sorry, Kelly like met with some of us residents in the springtime, and we had expressed um, an idea that we would like, rather than having vegetable gardens in the front of the building, um, that if we could have flowers, that, and I offered, um, and Kelly kindly accepted, um, that I would buy a bird bath. So we put the bird bath in with the flowers, and we were going to have rototill, and Kelly thought that would be a nice idea. It would improve the vision of the front of the sure. building. Um, 
for whatever reason, we now have a vegetable garden in the front again. Right. Um, some of us are rather frustrated that we were offering to pay for our own flowers, um, and we've got a vegetable garden again. Okay. I don't, you know, I, I just would like to know, is next year going to be when we can have flowers? So yes, you did bring that up to me. Can you hear me okay? So they've already planted. So yes. when we talked in We talked in the springtime. So April. March. March. Whatever they plant has been just keep on coming. Um, I have to give them another space. Where I they are vegetables. They were going to get a space out by the garage. I have to know there's sunlight. This could be tenant's only form of nutrition. Only form of vegetables they eat. I have to take into account that. Um, I just can't take away what somebody has already let them have. When we asked you about it in March, nobody was planting. And you told us that you were going to speak to the residents that do the planting out there. And in fact, you, I remember you telling us that you had spoken to the families of these people that don't speak English. And that we were going to have flowers in the front of the building. So I guess and, the... And, I, and they started planting in May. So I guess the answer is that... Um, for whatever reason, they planted. We're going to have to try to do it again next year. We're going to have to try to accommodate these uh, these folks that are, are growing the vegetables uh, as a reasonable matter. Uh, we're going to try to accommodate them and give them an area somewhere that is comparable for them to grow their vegetables. If we can do that and accomplish that and have flowers at the front of the building, I would be a very happy man. So well, we can, some of us remember that um, we kind of assumed, which I know is not a good word, um, that the process was in place, that Gary was going to get a rototiller and they were going to do the front of the building so that the residents who wanted flowers could plant them. And suddenly, I hear you. you know, I hear you. There was I, a whole bunch of gardening. I, I hear you. And, and I think that the answer is that it, uh, it got planted. And, this is three years in a row we've tried to put flowers there. I cannot I mean, take away. I mean, people are starting to plant when there's still frost in the ground. You know, we're going to always end up with a vegetable garden. Uh, so I, I Kelly has to manage this uh, beyond anything Richard said. There's nothing more we can comment. We can certainly work with Kelly offline, and we can certainly see what their accommodations are to the other people. But... Um, yeah, I feel your angst, and I'm sorry it didn't work out the way you thought, but I, I have to let Kelly... But I have to agree it. with you. I've always felt that there should be flowers at the front of the building rather than vegetable uh, gardens. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in if someone wants to grow vegetables somewhere, they should be allowed to do it if, yes. if we have a space for them to do it. Well, so, we understood so. that they were going to go to an area by the garage because there is a water source out there, and that they were going to plant their vegetables out by the out by the garage. Okay. Well, as the chair says, um, this is something for you to deal with Kelly on, and and uh, we hear you. Um, we can only put in our two cents and right. say we I, and we we, we we'd thought. like to see something like this. Right. Uh, but it's know, an operational. This is really issue. an operational it's issue that Kelly. Uh, Kelly has to handle. Right. So. Okay. Other questions, comments, feedback. Sure. Taken away a little, a little on my door. How do I get to 
how safe are we as women that are alone? So, so These that's a, things are happening, and why is there so much security now? There has to be a reason that security is here, which I, I respect the idea of having the security, but still, is there a reason? Is the people we cannot trust? I no. mean, why is this happening? So, I've been just here for a couple of three months, but I get nervous about situations and security. Sure. And that's why we have it. Our paramount concern is always the safety and security of our tenants. We Security is a relatively new thing for us in the last quarter or so. The reason we did it is um, we have the ability, we, this board, this body, has the ability to, if you will, I'll be very blunt, spend more money on this property in certain areas than we can with our state properties because we have antennas on the roof and those antennas afford us more money. One of the things we heard as a result of the new smoking policy is that people were bringing cigarettes in and out and people were standing by the door. And we heard directly from the tenants, would there be a way to police people smoking, police security, and improve the overall security of the building? So we chartered Kelly with the task of going out, looking for independent third party firms and hiring them. Once we hired them, the expectations and the feedback we got went up dramatically. People were like, this is great, we love it, there's, there's, it's been, I feel so safe and secure. However, it's somewhat predictable. Is there a way to mix up the predictability? Phase two, which was probably not more than a month after phase one, we said absolutely, because we're fortunate enough to have this additional money that the state wouldn't necessarily let us, the, gov the Fed wouldn't necessarily let us spend, we decided to add even more hours and mix it up. So the primary reason is the safety and security of the tenants and then to add an extra security feel to the overall building and environment. That's why it's not a 24 by seven, seven day a week entity. It's a few hours a day to enforce policies to make sure people aren't coming into your hallways and to just add a general feel of overall wellness to the, to the building. That's the answer. So you do want security as women that are alone. 100%. I don't have to worry about, you know, something happening in your You are articulating the reason why we did it. That it the, what you just said is the answer to the question of why we did it. And we had a lot of our residents uh, asked us to do it. Right. So uh, the bottom line is that uh, you ask if you're safe here. Uh, I would like to think you are. And and as a uh, as a member of this as a member of this board and as a member of this board, we want our residents to feel that this is a safe and secure place. It's it's where you live. So, um, you know, if we if we added security, it's it's just for your benefit. And and uh, there was no big bang incident. There wasn't a fight in the parking lot that erupted that made us have security the next right. day. It was a thoughtful, pensive decision on this part of this board to add one more incremental benefit to this project because we are so afforded the operating luxury of the funds to support it. And, I, and I, I would hope that our residents feel that it's a good thing to have security, and I would hope that our residents feel better that we have security because um, it is a benefit that a lot of facilities do not have. No, that's why we do this. I'm glad for the feedback. Any other questions? No? If there aren't any, I will gladly take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. Thank you, everyone.